meeting to order. This is a scheduled meeting of the Town of Berlin Development Review Board. It's a continuation of the application uh, for the um, master plan of the uh, capital city of Volkswagen Mazda. And I believe everyone that's on has been sworn on previously, with the exception of Mr. Toll. So, Mr. Toll, if you intend to give testimony before this board tonight, please raise your right hand. You better tell us the, the truth of the matters before this board tonight on the penalty of perjury. Yeah. Thank you. Um, and the rest of you, you're reminded you're on the rolls. Um, so, uh, Jeff. I'm going to open this to you, unless Mr. Toll wants to speak first, uh, to bring us up to speed with where you are on the changes and the recent memorandum you sent to us. Yeah, and I guess um, short of rehashing the whole project again, I, I guess I just direct everybody to the uh, cover letter dated August 13, 2020, that uh, was submitted to the town uh, as far as supplemental uh, information in conjunction with the revised plans. Um, the intent of that memo or cover letter was really just to highlight the uh, three or four items that I, we believe were kind of outstanding um, as we left our last uh, DRB meeting. Um, and so I try to outline these in no particular order. Um, and I guess what I'll do is I'll just give a quick recap of these um, and then I'll turn back over to the board for questions. Um, the first was with regards to the uh, essentially zoning waiver for the parking lot um, proposed on 12 Marvin Road and 40 Goodnow Road. I think the, the heart of it was really the fact that the 40 Goodnow Road property was fully within the rural 40 zoning district and and uh, we had made a request to have that essentially waiver uh, for the DRB to allow a parking lot uh, to be installed at that location even though that is not a permitted and conditional use. Um, I want to send out a thank you to all you board members who, who promptly met the day or two uh, evening after our last DRB meeting to discuss that further. Um, and I certainly appreciate the effort you had put into to fully evaluating that. Um, we did receive the essentially a decision on that deliberative session from Tom, uh, the day or two after um, and essentially authorized or approved the, the use of that parking lot, construction of the parking lot. Um, as proposed with uh, a series of conditions. Um, that list of conditions was shared with us and ultimately shared with ABLE and reviewed. And as outlined in our cover letter, I, I, I line item them to make sure it was clear what was uh, requested or conditioned and, and uh, confirming our um, approval of them, if you will, or uh, uh, fact that they were comfortable with with implementing as conditioned by the board during the quarter of session. So um, I think I'll just go through them really quickly, just so we're all on the same page. That And, and we're talking specifically about uh, parking lot B, which is the parking lot off of uh, Goodnow Road, um, that there'll be no employee parking in that parking lot. Uh, that'll be uh, equipped with an automated locking gate to restrict the access in that parking lot, um, and that no customer access will have access to that parking lot. Um, that the vehicles will only be parked in their designated line stripe parking stalls on that parking lot, uh, that there's no advertising allowed in conjunction with that parking lot, uh, that the lighting coincide with the business hours at 9 p.m., whichever is sooner. Uh, Abel has, uh, has agreed to, to um, agree to that, and I believe Abel, uh, I believe hours are generally 7 p.m. at the latest at any given day. Is that correct? Correct. So lights would be going off at 7 p.m. Uh, within that parking lot uh, on a daily basis. Um, that it was screened appropriately from the rural neighborhood components, and, and I'll get to that further here in a minute. Um, you also asked us to confirm the lot coverage uh, on those parcels, and we outlined it in the cover letter. Uh, we're only at 4.5 percent. Um, that's obviously a uh, you know large parcel over there. Um, and then the balance of those R40 R40 uh, parcels essentially uh, dedicated to a permanent conservation easement, um, which we have no issue doing. Um, I imagine that will be done uh, in a legal document of sorts uh, uh, that we'll have drafted up and provided to the town for, for their review before implementation. Um, are there any questions on that before I get to the second item? Yes, Polly. I just, I had a question. Wasn't the other parking lot that other property partially in R40? 
or yes so the, so the 12 the 40 good now road uh, property is a smaller it's like a 0.3 acre property that is essentially surrounded by the 12 marvin road property um and uh, if, if you'd like i could pull up the plan and highlight roughly where those property lines are if that's something you're interested in understanding the difference between those two lots well, I know you, you did send in your, you know, the Dropbox, you have the zoning map that, you know, shows the properties. I just, so there's like one was totally in R40 and the other was partially in R40. Yeah. So the, the 40 Goodnow Road, the Northeast property line. Yeah. I mean, this, I'll, let me screen share this and uh, I can maybe explain it a little bit better. Can everybody see that? Okay. So, uh, so here's Marvin Road here, Goodnow Road here. As I zoom in here, this lot right here is the 40 Goodnow Road, which is like right. just 0.3 acres. As I zoom out, the 12 Marvin Road property is everything along Goodnow Road, Marvin Road <laughs> Route uh, 2. The Winooski River, and then these two property lines. This whole thing is the 12 Marvin Road property, with the exception of this little cutout, which was was obviously part of a previous subdivision that done at some point. So, the way the zoning district leads here, you can see this uh, dash dot line. This is the approximate zoning boundary. It essentially, runs down Marvin Road, and then instead of following the road or property line, it actually follows this ditch line. Uh, that cuts through uh, Marvin 12 Marvin Road property, and so everything to the north of this is is commercial, and everything down here, including the 40 Goodnow Road, is the rural 40 zoning district. And so, I, I, from what I gathered in our previous conversations, is because the 12 and Marvin Road property was kind of split between the two, um, we were relatively comfortable allowing for the parking lot in, within that this portion of the rural 40, but it was. Uh, uh, this small lot also could take a portion of it being fully in their RL40 zoning district. That was what we requested and received the waiver for. Does, does that clarify it for you, Polly? Yeah, I just, I, I have a hard time visualizing where the other parking lot is. Uh, you can just go back to that plan and just sort of give a general idea. Yeah, uh, so let me get out of here. Um, they, so this is the same map, just blown up a little bit. So okay. this is the 40 Goodnow Road property here. So here's parking lot B, which is the one that we are, we've are we discussed, having lights off at 7 o'clock, having a gate installed at the entrance here. And then this is parking lot A, which would be directly off of Marvin Road. And that's totally within the commercial distance. This is totally within the commercial okay. distance. Yeah, that's, the, the, that's the zoning cool. boundary essentially is right this stream yeah. or, or ditch okay. line right here. Yep. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Uh, any other questions on that component uh, before I jump down to the landscaping? I guess I'm going to throw this out. Um, uh, Jeffrey, you said that I mean, as we've requested, there'll be no employee parking in the RL40 lot. Uh, were you anticipating some employee parking in the other lot, lot A? Uh, potentially, if it would be allowed, yes. I think that'd be the preference of, of, of able to have, have that, at least to have that ability. Uh, I'm, I'm okay. I, speaking as one member of the board, I'm okay with that. But I guess I would ask that we restrict that parking uh, of employees to that lot to those employees that are working at the Mazda uh, VW place. Not to, and I'm thinking here about the cross Route 2 traffic, pedestrian traffic. So that's a thought I have in the back of my mind for our discussion. Yeah, I, I agree. Um, because that that is a concern of mine it's the crossing route two so i see it usable for part employee parking but not necessarily employee parking for locations across the road can i can i make a point this is able yes um our parking lot is already across the road for the gmc dealership so 
already in that row. I'm sorry, I didn't get all of that. The employee parking is already across the road. For the GMC store, the parking is already on the side of the road where, where we're proposing to put the new building. So you're proposing so to continue? We wouldn't, be increasing, we, we wouldn't be increasing the number of people crossing the road. So we wouldn't have any way parking on the GMC side coming across. And that would because that would increase it but if we leave the parking for the employees on that side of the road it would keep it the same so you're saying that they will continue to park across route two from the gmc dealership that would be that would be my hope like that's what they're already doing that <laughs> Okay, I think we understand that. GMC employees. Oh, we're not getting that. Can you hear me? Now we can. Go ahead, Josh. I just wondered why it's necessary for GMC. Why it's necessary for GMC and put a park on this side of the Um. The, the lot is very tight on the GMC side. We've always parked across the road since we built the parking lot. And that was part of the reason that was part of the reason we built the parking lot was to relieve the congestion on the GMC side. Uh, we've had conflicting information saying that one place the traffic analysis assumed that they would continue. Elsewhere, we have testimony that says that will not continue. I'd have to go through the testimony to find where that is. Uh, but I think there's a concern on this board's part about pedestrian traffic, namely the employees going back and forth, parking on one side, walk, walking back and forth to get to their vehicle, and, and again, to go to lunch, and then again, to go home. Um, we understood that the last plan we looked at would have employees parking both at their respective parking lots which frankly i didn't see necessary as a personal one individual on the board when you're going to have the vw mazda on the same side of, of route two as lot a so i didn't see that as a problem i do see it as a problem with continued crossing route two so you want you want to lessen the crossing you want to be less than it is now. Correct. So if we don't build this building, it would stay the same, right? But we um, wouldn't be involved. Right, so it would stay the same. That would be correct. Uh, that was never the understanding, by the way, when that lot was built, but that's okay. Mm -hmm. It's what happened. Okay. Hi, this is Michelle Lambert. Um, so we're going to have people crossing Marvin Road to go over to the Volkswagen dealership, and then they're going to cross Route 2 to get over to the GMC dealership. So they're going to be crossing two roads now to go to work, and that seems even worse to me. And this week there's actually an accident right out in front of their parking lot on Route 2. I don't know if it was caused by somebody turning or somebody walking across the road, but one way or the other, there was an accident right at their intersection of their driveways this week. But it wasn't necessarily to do with somebody walking, right? I, w I didn't witness it, so I don't know if it was somebody turning or if it was a pedestrian. And this is, this is Mike Noyce talking. Um, I was under the impression that there would be no employee parking on either of the lots that were, uh, were being proposed. I thought that was the understanding. Uh, that was my understanding, and maybe I'm wrong, but I thought that was the understanding of of, of what we came to. Well, I think the only understanding that I was aware of, at least, was that we'd be doing employee parking at the lot off the Goodnow Road, and the rest was open discussion, which we're just doing now, discussing. <laughs> This is Tour. Tour? 
Um, Mr. Toll, thanks for being with us tonight. Um, one question, do you intend to use the Marvin Road or Goodenow Road uh, parking for GMC inventory or just for the Mazda Volkswagen inventory? On the Goodenow Road? Uh, both Goodenow and Marvin Road parking areas. Uh, which road, sir? Marvin and Goodenow. Uh, we do plan to use it for GMC and for Volkswagen Mazda. Okay, so there'll be uh, vehicle traffic going across route two as well then. Um, again, to get to the dealer building. Right, the GMC, a lot of the GMC inventory is already on that side of the road, so I don't think it will increase any. Okay, thank you, sir. And this is Mike Noise again. I, I thought I thought all of this was, I thought both of the parking lots being proposed were solely for Volkswagen Mazda inventory. I thought that all of this, the GMC dealership was going to be completely separate. I thought we were trying to minimize the amount of uh, pedestrian traffic going across. I thought we were trying to minimize the amount of employee traffic going from uh, across Marvin Road and then across Route 2. I thought these were going to be completely separate. That was my my, that's my understanding of the way this has gone these past two meetings. Yeah. I don't have to defer to Jeff because I, I, mean, I was not at the meeting, so I will, I, I will defer to Jeff on that. Yeah, I guess I would say, I mean, if I gave that impression that there'd be no capital T GMC vehicles uh, inventory stored on either of those lots, I apologize. That would certainly, I, I don't believe I expressively ever said that. Um, you know, the, the, the problem we have here is there's just not a property that's large enough to, uh, you know, obviously manage uh, the amount of inventory that, that ABLE has to deal with. And, uh, you know, we're doing the best with the space that we have available to us to, um, you know, limit the amount of vehicular and pedestrian traffic that uh, will be crossing any of the roads for that matter. Um, you know, the other thing that I would, I guess, suggest uh, falling back on is the uh, you know, independent traffic study that VHB had per performed, um, and we had provided a supplemental information two uh, meetings ago or two submissions ago, um, you know, that really outlined uh, the fact that, that they felt the way that the site operated now, as well as how the proposed sites will operate in the future. And, and I believe that that um, report outlined exactly what the uh, their um, uh, assumptions were as far as how the sites would be used um, really uh, came to the conclusion that this this project as a whole would not create any unsafe or adverse conditions for Route 2 or Morton Road or Goodnow Road from that perspective. So, um, and, and above and beyond that, we're, we've obviously agreed to some restrictions on certain components of, uh, of the use of these parking lots, specifically the 40 Goodnow Road uh, parking lot to, to minimize that further. So. Um, you know, I, that's all I can say. Uh, you know, some of this obviously is a functional operational uh, issue versus a engineering design issue. Um, so there's only so much I can weigh in as far as how the inventory is managed. Um, but but I think the problem that Able comes across is that neither one of the independent building sites, whether it's the Capital City GMC or the new Volkswagen Mazda dealership. Uh, have enough area or space or parking stalls on their independent properties to support those individual businesses. Um, and, and correct me if I'm wrong, Abel, but I, mean, I think that's the purpose of having these remote uh, parking areas um, so that you can't have the inventory within um, a walking distance and it's not something where you're having to either lease areas miles down the road or around or, or um, not have inventory available that you could have. So, um, yeah. Uh, that's that's correct, and I think also I think I think it might have been in the traffic study. Um, you know, we only have on one side of the road or the other for sales customers maybe ten a day, and so and and some of those wouldn't there wouldn't be any reason to bring a car from one side of the road to the other. So this isn't a, a high traffic thing by any means. Oh, Mr. Toll, um, I beg to differ because I actually was one of your customers and the uh, employee took me across the lot to go look at cars um, when I was shopping at your at, at the GMC store. I, I, yeah, I, I, excuse me, I, I thought 
I thought we were talking about moving cars from one side of the road to the other. That's what I was, that's what I was referring to. Okay, I, I think, um, as I understand it right now, the proposal is to um, use the lot on Marvin Road for employee parking, um, including employee parking from um, both sides of the road. In other words, the Mazda dealership and the GMC dealership. Um, and I think the, the board will take that under advisement. I, we, I think we've heard all the testimony we need to hear on this, unless I'm looking for some other information here. I just want to ask if... I apologize, if I'm, I'm moving on. <laughs> Sorry, can you hear me, Bob? Hello? I can hear you, Carla. We hear you, Carla, go. Okay, so I just want to ask if it would, if which would create more traffic? The, uh, uh, pedestrian traffic, vehicles parked in that parking lot or employees parked in the parking lot? Because I think that's, you know, are they, is it going to create more by having to go back and forth and get in the vehicles or is it going to create more by the employees parking there and only going, you know, so that's that's sort of my question. If that has an answer. <laughs> and I, I may defer to Abel on this, but I guess my thought, uh, Abel, is I, I feel like it's more advantageous for the dealerships to have as much inventory on their property as possible so they do not have to require customers either wait while they go get a vehicle and or walk them across the street as Mike just alluded to um, if there's a specific model or color or style that they want so that's why they attempt to um, and they're obviously trying to minimize the amount of pedestrian traffic that customers have to do. Um, so I, I believe that that's the pre one of the reasons why the preference is to have employees park remotely because that's a control. They're safer, you know, they're familiar with the process, crossing the road, uh, do it on a daily basis, and, and that would be the preference to have them doing it instead of clients. Well, and, and I guess to my, my point is, is that either way, that there's going to be traffic across vehicle, uh, pedestrian traffic across the road. So I'm just trying to ascertain if one scenario is better than the other, but. I think what Jeff's alluding to is better for the employees to be across the road because they know the traffic patterns. Where well, I, I was under the impression that, that, the, that you did not take customers across the road, actually. That's one thing I was under the impression, uh, that customers were not, that vehicles were brought to the customers, that the customers did not cross the road to the parking lot. So that was that's a little concerning to hear that aspect of it for me. Polly, you're on mute. Oh. Still on mute, Polly. <laughs> I was under the same impression that vehicles were going to be brought to the, the prospective buyers and that only employees would be going into those lots. Um, and that's, you know, as it is right now, I think we do bring some some customers across the road. I think we're more likely to I would hope we're more likely to go get the car from them. Um, as the parking lot gets farther away, I think there's less of a chance to put a customer across the road um, all the way over to one of those that further parking lot at um, Marvin Road. I think that is I think that we would make every effort to bring the car to the customer. That's what it should be anyway. Okay, that's all I have. Is there any additional testimony on other other folks have testimony on the parking on the uh, these conditions that were imposed on the R um, the RL forty lot? Yes, this is John Connor. Like, this is John Connor. I'd like to make a couple comments if I can, please. Yes, sir. John, please go ahead. So, a couple of things. There's some real background noise. Somebody, not me. I'm not sure, uh, I think if we go way back and look at the permitting of the property that is now being proposed as a new Volkswagen Mazda dealership, you'll find that that lot was approved for surplus inventory only. It's not approved for employee parking. Um, I think there's also a couple of concerns with how vehicles and people and pedestrians are being trucked back and forth and passing back and forth. It's very busy. Um, there's definitely some concerns about 
uh, pedestrian vehicle traffic back and forth to the two different sides of the property. And I think the board should give that a lot of consideration before the approval is given uh, because leasing whatever conditions you put on are going to be difficult uh, because right now the conditions that are on that property uh, for just surplus vehicles has never been policed. So I think this approval should be carefully considered given traffic. And I, and I don't think the traffic study was truly a traffic study. It really looked at Marvin and Goodnow Road. It did not look at the traffic counts on Route 2, and it didn't consider the high traffic count of Route 2 as it's going to be impacted by having two dealerships directly across the road from each other. Uh, we see routinely vehicles uh, trying to turn left or right into the existing dealership as we are coming into our property. And routinely, you're trying to sneak between cars being unloaded in the road, pedestrians crossing the road, whether employees or customers or vehicles coming and going. And it's a very busy corridor. And um, I think for the safety of everyone involved, that should be closely looked at. And I would argue that a full traffic study and perhaps even turn lanes on Route 2 should be considered. And I understand that that's outside the purview of the DRB, but that's something that uh, I'll certainly advocate for in future permitting. Thank you, John. Other comments with regard to this um, use of the lots? Hey, uh, uh, Adam, Adam Lambert. Um, I'm a little late to the meeting here, but um, what I understand is that so far we're talking about employees parking on Marvin and Goodnell. And um, what I understood before was, was that was uh, that was no longer an issue because they weren't going to be parking there. And um, I guess I could address Abel on this one because ultimately these are his employees and this is his business. And um, and I think I brought this up at the meeting uh, when we were down on Goodnow Road that they've, they've not been good neighbors to this point. And that's why he's meeting opposition here. Um, I thought we were all on the same page with no employee parking on this side of the road. And to hear that uh, that's changed is disappointing. Um, and also, I agree with John Connor on this one that uh, some kind of turn lane should be added to Route 2. Um, not sure if that pertains to what we're on right now, but I just wanted to add my two cents. The turn lanes on Route 2, I don't believe within the purview of the town of Berlin. That is within the purview of the agency of transportation. They will be issuing a permit separately, and they have their own process, um, and probably they would entertain any comments to that effect. Um, uh, we're really primarily looking at the, uh, I think going back to what you first said, I think we're all of the understanding there will be no employee part. The, on the lot that's off of uh, Goodnow Road. Um, so far, we have not ruled on whether or not there'll be employee parking on uh, the lot that is off, which I believe you call it lot A. Is, is that correct, Jeff? Anyway, the lot off of um, uh, Goodnow Road. I mean, off of um, Marvin. Marvin Road. Yes, yeah. Right. And, um, and, and right now, the applicant is proposing that there be employee parking on Marvin Road parking lot. So that's where we are at the moment. But, but Bob, I'll go back to again, just what John and Adam and I all were under the understanding of is, is that this was surplus parking on both lots and surplus parking obviously does not include employees. And I thought that was specifically addressed in, in these two prior, prior meetings. So I would urge the board to go back at the testimony and, um, and it, although extensive, I think it's worth looking into that I really thought that this was, was, was very specific. Thank you. You who was speaking? Uh, that's Mike Noyes. Thank you, Mike. I, I can't see who's speaking on my screen. Um, so when you do speak and you're on telephone, you need to introduce yourself, please. Um, any further conversation on this? I think we've heard a lot of testimony on this. I think the DRBs are going to have to take all this testimony into consideration. 
Um, if there's no new testimony, I'm going to move on to the next item. Can, can I just offer one thing, Mr. Chair? I just, as we were discuss, discussing here, I did pull up the approved DRB decision for the original uh, Capital City GMC uh, and satellite parking uh, decision then. And, and just for clarification, there was no specific addition of approval that outlined what the use or what type of parking uh, would be required at the 1189 uh, Route 2 property. Um, and then secondarily, just, you know, again, addressing these questions or concerns about Route 2 and traffic lanes. Uh, again, that Act 250 and AOT uh, permitting will thoroughly address uh, the review of, of those concerns or safety concerns as part of the traffic review. Thank you, Jeff. Um, Jeff, uh, Jeff, this is John Connor again. I think that was in the Act 250 paperwork that they uh, had committed to having surplus parking only on that side of the road. And when the Act 250 commission came and toured the site, they were told the same and told that employees would go and get the vehicles on the opposite side of the road. It was, I don't believe it was permitted for employee parking. I think it was permitted for solely for surplus vehicle inventory. Thank you. Yeah, I, I can't speak quite on the Act 250 permit conditions right now, but uh, we can certainly take a look at that. Thank you. Um, any additional testimony? Hearing none, uh, going ahead to the landscaping issues, Jeff. Uh, yeah, um, so moving on to, to bullet point two was uh, some confirmation that the landscaping plan complies with the landscaping standards. Uh, we went through and provided a summary of the front yard, building and parking lot landscaping requirements, um, and then ultimately showed that under all three of those uh, specific requirements as far as the number of shrubs and trees required that we complied with those three uh, uh, requirements with the extensive landscaping plan that we're proposing. Um, and then tying into that, there was also a, uh, uh, we agreed at the end of the last CRB meeting to meet with uh, the neighbors on Goodnow Road um, to review this uh, Lot B parking area and landscaping and, and screening um, to see if there was some modifications or revisions to the landscaping plan that they'd like to see in conjunction with that. Uh, we held that meeting uh, on the following Monday evening. Uh, Tom was uh, present for that meeting, myself, Dee Dee Brush, the landscape designer, as well as uh, four or five, at least, um, of the neighboring uh, property owners. Uh, we reviewed the, the Fox location, the access off of Goodnow Road, um, at that time, we had already received the, dis the delivered dis uh, decision from the DRB with regards to the restrictions on that parking lot. So uh, I shared all of those uh, conditions of approval with, with the members there. And we kind of just sat on the property for half an hour, 45 minutes and talked it all through. Um, long story short, uh, you know, in, in relaying all those conditions as far as uh, the minimal of lighting levels and being turned off at specific times, um, highlighting where the proposed landscaping would be. Um, the long story short is there were no requested changes to the landscaping plan um, along the, with regards to parking lot B or the one off of Goodnow Road um, from what we had already proposed. So we essentially left that, la that landscaping plan as previously submitted. Um, that is summary of the landscaping. Um, are there any questions on that? before I jump down to uh, the last one or two items here. Any questions on the last statement? Yes, Paul? You're muted, Paul. Uh, muting, mute, mute, mute. <laughs> Polly, I'm mute. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, I just have a question. Your your memo because it appeared satisfied, and I just wanted to know that there was a definite we're satisfied. Uh, I'm sorry. Can you direct me to what line? Well, on the last, I don't know. It's not. They're not numbered. But on the second, the third page of your memo at the top. There's a bullet and it, it's about the meeting that you have and you say the neighbors appeared satisfied. It's page three yeah. at the uh, three. top paragraph. Yeah. And, yeah. 
Yeah, and I just wanted to make sure they were definitely satisfied with the landscaping. Yeah, I think the purpose of, of adding that language in was just because, and obviously not all neighbors were present for that meeting. Um, the ones that were in attendance, and, and I think Adam and Michelle were present. Uh, I believe Randy White was present. Uh, maybe Cindy and Mike Noyes. Maybe Mike Noyes stopped in briefly. Um, and there was, I thought, one or two others. Tom, maybe you have a, a list of who attended. But again, at, at the end of that meeting, we walked away asking if, if there's any changes. Now would be the time to request them. And, and the overwhelming feeling that, that I got uh, from that discussion was that no changes were requested. And, and maybe Tom could confirm or, or elaborate on that. I think, I think Randy White was there, the closest neighbor. Um, and yeah, Jess, Jeff, I concur that with respect to the, the RL40, the, the Goodnow Road, my sense was that the neighbors were satisfied with the conditions that came out of the DRB deliberative session on on that uh, uh, on that parking lot, and, and really were didn't think any additional landscaping was was needed. Jo Josh, you're on mute. If you're trying to speak, we cannot hear you. <laughs> Were there uh, any other questions with regards to landscaping? Hearing none, um, I'll, I'll move on to the last couple items. Um, one was the uh, looking into the uh, revision of if not, the lighting plan. Um, we obviously discussed at, at length at the last meeting. Um, you know, the uh, trying to get a definition or clarification of what the specific standards were. Uh, we walked away from that last meeting with the understanding that the average maximum foot candle uh, for the exterior lighting plan needed to be two or lower. We were previously, I think, on an average uh, of 2.45. So uh, the, the landscape, uh, the, I'm sorry, the lighting manufacturer uh, uh, supplied a revised uh, exterior lighting plan, getting us to that three foot candle threshold, uh, I'm sorry, two foot candle threshold um, to uh, uh, comply with the lighting standards. Um, additionally, uh, just to reiterate, you know, the 40 Goodnow Road uh, pro parking lot area uh, specifically will have lights turned off at 7 p.m. and not turned back on until business building comes up the next day. Um, and uh, we will still are requesting some level of security lighting uh, around the proposed building um, as part of the, uh, just the uh, anti vandalism or security plan. Um, and then the last quick item it is more excuse than yeah excuse, yeah excuse me so uh, on your on the bullet point there about the exterior lighting on the on your third bullet down there you say um that you have agreed to parking area lights associated with both remote remote parking so that yeah. is both the good now and the marvin road lights will be off at seven is that is that what you're having you're stating here I believe so. And Abel, is that your understanding as well? You're comfortable with that statement? Say it one more time just to make sure I heard it correctly. So, so the two remote parking areas, the one off of Marvin Road and Goodnow Road, the, the lights would go off at 7 p.m. and come on at uh, whatever uh, uh, operation start up again, 6 or 7 in the morning. Uh, but that they would be uh, essentially at the entrance a motion sensor uh, that could potentially trigger the lights on to protect against vandalism or uh, intrusion or something of that nature. That's my that's my understanding. Yes. I have a number of questions here, um, Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. um, first, my my first question has to do with the uh, timer. Uh, I like the strategy. I, I like the turning time off and so forth. Uh, with the um, remote um, the uh, uh, sensor, when that turn comes on, what lights does that turn on? All the lights? <laughs> some of the lights? Yeah, it, it would be uh, some of the lights. Uh, so LSI, who's preparing the lighting plan, was working on a reduced uh, security level lighting plan today for us, but uh, apparently they were having technical difficulties and weren't able to get that quite in, in time. But the intent would be that uh, if that motion sensor was triggered, components of the lighting system would turn on for a finite period of time, a couple minutes, 
so that there'd be a deterrent for you know access into those remote parking lots as part of the nighttime um, you know uh, security level of, of associated with those two parking lots. Yeah, I was I was looking for a little definition. I, I was kind of hoping not all the lights would come on. Um, certainly, lights at the entrance I would expect to come on. Yep. Because that's where you'd likely have a breach. Uh, but you might have other lights come on too. So I was looking for some definition of what lights would yeah. come on, on with a remote. Yeah, and unfortunately, we'll probably go provide that that uh, revised nighttime lighting plan within the next day or two. Uh, unfortunately, I did not have that available for this meeting. I have I have another related qu question, and. I, I, I apologize for not having studied the first lighting plan more carefully. The first lighting plan said you had an average lighting of 2.4, something like that, uh, um, foot candles. Mm -hmm. uh, in looking at the revised lighting plan uh, and studying it more thoroughly, and unfortunately, your plan analysis that comes up with two foot candles is must be including in the analysis uh, readings well outside of the parking lots because the actual average lighting in the parking lots is more like six and seven foot candles not two foot candles yeah I would that I would again uh, understanding that I didn't specifically prepare this lighting plan but I would imagine it's uh, essentially a, they define different site areas um, for each of these calculations one being the overall site and then they broke out the three individual parking lot sites um, and supplied averages, max and mins, and ratios for each one of those. And, and that summary can be found in the upper right corner of the C2.9 uh, sheet. In studying that sheet more carefully, and I apologize, I did not do that before the last meeting, uh, I do find that the average light in the um, um, in lot. Um, which this 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 plan calls um, upper side lot and the lower side of lot, which I believe is upper is your A, correct, and and lower is your B. Um, the upper being um, uh, six point five foot candles average on the lot, and my examination of the numbers suggests that that's the right number. And on the low on the lower lot is seven point um, uh, one nine or seven point two call it mm -hmm. foot candles. That's considerably more than the two foot candles we call for in our bylaw. Now we say average. We don't we don't mean in the average all the readings that you can get if you look at the drawing. The drawings that readings all outside. In fact, outside of the property lines. So I'm not sure how the person arrived at two foot candles, but I do know, and having done a little research, I looked up um, the um, Illumination um, Engineering Society's criteria for And in looking at their information, it suggests to me these lighting capacities, these foot candles are significantly in, in uh, above the recommended for a parking lot. Uh, most specifically, if I look up the Illumination um, uh, Engineering Society recommendations, the average is one, not the two we specify in our regulations, ranging from 0.5 to two foot candles throughout the site. And of course, this here has illumination levels ranging from five to 11 or more. So I don't think this meets the, our criteria. The average so-called two foot candles is using numbers well outside of not only the lot, but also well outside of the property lines. I think, I'm guessing because I, I, I did do the, we do the math. Yeah, and again, I, unfortunately, I can't answer these specific questions with any uh, definitive answer, again, not having produced the plan. Um, I, I can say, and having prepared some lighting plans in the past, 
uh, as when you're evaluating these different areas, you have the ability to define a site area, whether that's to within the property lines or just within the parking lot itself. Um, I've got to assume um, that when, when I'm looking at this summary up here, that the average and the min and max, when they say lot, they mean just a paved area within that parking lot, not the property lot. And that the the overall of all counts includes, you know, some variation of the property lines or, or site area out to where the lighting level goes to zero. That's generally how we've done in the past. Um, but again, I would need to return back to LSI to get definitive answers on these questions. Yeah, I, I think it would be useful if they were here, obviously, to speak to us on this. But um, I can tell you, I studied this enough to have a pretty good sense of what's going on. And that the average lighting on lot um, B is, in fact, seven foot candles, not two foot candles. And if I took some license and I let that run over to the property line limits or some 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 perimeter around the property line, it might be less than that, but it would not be two. To get the two, my sense is you'd have to do the math on all the points shown on this drawing. And I'm referring to drawing C29. Um, yeah. So I, 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 I don't believe this complies with our bylaw. Um, and, and I didn't examine it more carefully before, but we, we did understand that it had to comply with the bylaw. We did understand it was an average for the lot, but I'm not sure the average involved areas extending well across the road and onto other properties. Yeah, and again, I apologize for not being able to be able to define the site area for you or the, the total average of how they got the two. Um, I feel like it probably should be highlighted in a circle around around the, the on the plan somewhere to show what what exactly that two involves. Um, you know, I, I do think that there's obviously potential for the parking lot areas themselves to be substantially higher than two if we're talking about the entire site area average having to be two. Um, I guess, you know, we're happy to go back to LSI and get these answers um, and make revisions if necessary. Uh, but it would be good to know what the expectation is as far as what that two foot candle needs to pertain to, whether it's each individual average for the parking lot or if it's the project area as a whole. Because I, I, based on what I'm seeing, I, I obviously agree is that any individual parking area certainly isn't at that two or below, but that the site area as a whole probably would be, um, or, or close to it. Um, but I, I would well, ask let me let me stop you, Jeff, because if I and again they provide the information here. Yeah. Uh, if we look at the uh, building parking lot, namely that's the the, the parcel directly across the road there. They they're saying the average light in fast average light there is nine. Unless unless they're talking about something different, I'm not looking at the parking lot. The lower side parking lot is seven, and the upper side parking lot is six. So those numbers are, uh, they're not inconsistent with lighting uh, recommended by the um, uh, Illumination Engineer Society for um, showrooms, but it is inconsistent with lighting for parking lots. It does exceed the two. So I don't think we've met the mark here. I don't, this is my personal view. And I would certainly be willing to listen to others, but I got to tell you, I spent enough time on the computer today to have a pretty good sense of where I'm coming from. I also consulted with a couple of electrical engineers today, and uh, their first reaction was seven. That's a lot of light. It, it um, I, this is able. I, you know, it's not our intention to light it up. Um, like a showroom. Um, so I think that um, um, it is unfortunate we don't have the um, lighting engineer's report. But um, you know, we're going to have to get that to you. I can assure you that we're not, we don't want it to look like a showroom outside. Uh, that's not our intention at all. I, I, I want you to have security. Security, my understanding, is anywhere between one and two foot candles. 
but I don't want a showroom over here. In fact, we've been very clear about that, especially right. uh, the lot, a lot off of Good Now Road. Not our, it's, not, yeah, it's not our intention at all. And again, you know, they'll, be, they'll be off at seven o'clock at night. Um, so for a good part of the year, they won't be on at all at night. But, but again, it's not our intention. No, and, and we appreciate that. But for a good part of the year, uh, it's pretty dark out before seven. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I forget how it is. I guess too much of the year. Yes, I agree with you. So, Mr. so Chair, I, we need we. I'm gonna I'm gonna, as one member of the board, gonna insist on some real clarification on that. But somebody's gonna have to do some real hard work to convince me I'm wrong. And I would suggest that these whoever the design folks are, be on the meeting and can answer these questions. Yeah, I think that's the, that's the easy answer is, is to uh, whether it was a, a lack of communication, us providing them what the expectation was for the lighting plan. There's obviously a breakdown in, in uh, you know, what they needed to design to and, and uh, what was provided and what your expectations were. I'm sure that they enable are willing to revise this to a level that, that satisfies the uh, requirements within the lighting regulations of the town. Um, it's just making that clear to them what those expectations are. And it sounds like what we need to do is, is get uh, both of those parking lot areas at two or below independent of an overall site evaluation. Um, just so I can clearly relay this to them, is that a similar expectation for the building site as well? Uh, Unfortunately, this, this, that's the expectation for all three lots. Okay. Uh, now, I didn't look for exceptions to that in our bylaw for the, the sales lot. Uh, obviously, it does not apply to interior lighting. It only appear, applies to exterior lighting, but uh, it, does, it does apply to all exterior lighting, as I understand our ordinance. Uh, also, it pertains to all exterior lighting, as I understand at least the four or five different references that I looked up that speak to exterior lighting and safety and security. We, all I can say is we'll try to make that clear to LSI as they go ahead and prepare a revised lighting plan. Because I'm not prepared to approve the lighting plan as it is now. So, uh, but I do like I do like your proposal on the timers. And I do like your proposals on the um, emergency. I do I'd like I'd like to know how many lights come on when you have a an activated uh, event whether it's all or those nearby or, you know, there just must be some logical way to do that. So, but yeah, um, I would hope not all the lights come on and all three lots. Um, are there other comments or questions with regard to lighting of those three lots? Um, yeah, Bob, this is John. Um, I, we had a discussion with, um, uh, with another permit at one time about glare and that uh, we expect that uh, it is not uh, lighting glare is not supposed to extend outside of the property lines and yet this lighting plan shows precisely that there would be light produced that would then extend uh, beyond the property lines and that may be another concern uh, that uh, they need to have uh, when designing this lighting plan. Well, yeah, um, I, I think that there is a distinction, however, um, uh, John, between glare mm -hmm. and um, and light spilling out over beyond the property line. I think this conversation we've had on other permits before. Mm -hmm. So they're showing spillover light, and that's probably because they've had such intense lighting here that it would probably go away if we went down to two. Um, but the glare is, I, as I interpret glare, mm -hmm. is lights literally too high or directed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I was going to ask Tom about that. Tom, there was a complaint about glare. What did you find out about that? Uh, it, was, it was a valid complaint, but it was coming from a neighboring property. It, it, was, it wasn't, wasn't associated with any of the properties being discussed as part of this application.
Did you have further on that, John? No, uh, just uh, something, you know, something that they may want to review in terms of our bylaws to make sure that, you know, what they're doing is consistent. And, and, and Jeff and I talked about this when we were out there that, okay. that um, uh, there are fully shielded mechanisms, especially maybe for the, the perimeter lights that may cure some of this issue that you're talking about, John. Excellent. And, 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 and the expectation is, is that when the lights go up and, and they're reviewed, and if, if glare is an issue, additional shielding will be required. Excellent. All right, thank you. Other comments or questions with regard to lighting? So I guess we'll leave that unresolved, Jeffrey, until you get back to us. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, I'll. I'll I, I, apologize, I apologize for that. I really should have studied it more carefully first time around. No, and, and I apologize as well. I mean, obviously, with the lighting plan, we're more of a conduit. We we provide the lighting regulations to the manufacturer, and they provide us a lighting plan that we incorporate in the plans. And and uh, in honesty, I'm not a lighting designer, or lighting expert, or electrical engineer for that matter. So. Um, you know, I, I, we either should have had them at this meeting to answer these questions and, or, uh, made it better clear to them what the expectation was as far as, um, you know, maximum lighting levels. And I think I've got a good understanding of that now. So it's just a matter of returning to them to, to have them revise the plan accordingly. Thank you. Uh, you had one more point you wanted to make in your, 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 um, a couple more yeah. questions. And it was uh, nothing specifically that the board had asked, um, but we did talk about it a little bit, um, was the intersection of Marvin, Ro Marvin Road and Goodnow Road and our new access uh, point and some uh, just trying to increase the safety of that intersection. Um, ironically, in talking with some of the neighbors uh, while we are doing a landscaping review down there, is apparently there used to be a stop sign at the end of Goodnow Road as you teed into Marvin Road that may have been hit and knocked over at some point in the past and, and never replaced. Um, but what we would like to propose now to um, essentially create a safer intersection at that location is, is the installation of stop signs from the three approaches, uh, both on Marvin Road and Goodnow Road there. Um, I think at a bare minimum, the wood on Goodnow Road is which should be, I wanna say mandatory, but would be strongly encouraged because as vehicles come down Goodnow Road and turn left on Marvin Road, they really have uh, no reason to slow down or stop uh, and potentially could come into conflict with vehicles coming down Marvin Road heading to towards Route 2. Um, and, and so in an effort to understanding we're adding another intersection or, or access point at that location, um, I, we just think it makes sense to add stop signs at, at those three approaches so that it's a controlled environment um, that there will be some uh, better understanding and, and uh, safety as far as the vehicle delivery process is concerned there as well, um, and, and to potentially reduce conflicts with vehicles coming down Marvin Road and Goodnow Road at the same time. Questions or comments with regard to that? Yeah, Adam Lambert again. Um, I think a stop sign at the end of Goodnow Road is sufficient. Um, stop signs at both sides of Marvin Road just seemed like uh, overkill, a bit ridiculous to me. That is a through road, and uh, good now tease into it, so I can see a stop sign there. But but a basically a three or four way stop is uh, a bit much, and in, in my opinion. And this is Mike Noise talking. Um, I, I would echo Adam's sentiment. I think a four way stop at that uh, on on that dirt road is is for three houses is. Um, is overkill. I think good, you know, I think, I think with the two employees, one backing out and one directing traffic as was promised, um, by, um, by the, by the dealership is going to be enough, um, to make sure that the people coming out of the Volkswagen dealership, um, are safe. And obviously a, a stop sign that used to be there on Goodnow road that just no longer is, um, would be plenty. Thank you. I would I would point out that any signs that are placed on this road uh, by the applicant uh, would need it, it, 
would need to go through an approval process with a select board who in fact determines what happens on town roads. But I, I but that was my first reaction. I did not drive it, so I don't have a sense of whether or not we need stop signs on all three legs or just a stop sign on Goodnow Road. But we've heard testimony from two of the people that live there. And for what it's worth, we're happy to remove the two proposed signs on Marvin Road and, and just go back to the originally, theoretically original uh, stop sign on Goodnow Road, if that's what everybody's comfortable with. Again, I, I'm good with that, with the understanding that you will end ultimately all the improvements that you've discussed with regard to alignment, culverts, uh, and stop signs will be going through the select board for their review. Anything. Uh, anything further with regard to the Goodnow Road, Marvin Road intersection? Okay, I'm, I'm gonna, I, I think we've gone through your most recent memo. I think your recent memo covers everything that was loose, uh, at least in, in my memory, which is limited. Um, and um, if there are any additional questions by the board, I would ask you to bring them up now. Uh, the budding property owners, or the um, interested parties, do you have any further comments or questions you'd like to introduce at this point in time? Uh, yeah, this is Mike Noyes. I have I have two. Um, and I don't, I don't know if this is the right time for, uh, for the first one. When the improvements are made to Marvin Road, you're talking about putting a new cut in. Um, how will that impact, um, you know, how will that impact us getting up the road as well as, um, you know, customers coming to, to, to the businesses up there? Yeah, we're not. Sorry, is that, is that during the construction or post construction? No, no, pre uh, during construction. Post construction is obvious. It's just you know it's it's new. Um, but but during construction, is there is there going to be like how is that going to work? Yeah, and ultimately there'll be a, a construction phasing plan essentially that will at a bare minimum maintain one lane traffic. Um, flagger style uh, with appropriate signage per MUTC and AOT standards to allow for that construction to take place. Um, we have not got into the constructability uh, uh, construction schedule or phasing yet, obviously, but um, it, obviously understanding that, that both Marvin Road and Goodnet Road are essentially dead end roads. Um, we understand that we have to maintain access <laughs> um, on a full time basis there. Um, so that that's something that uh, us and, and the owner and the con whoever the selected contractor is to construct it will will you know need to take under advisement. Great, perfect, thank you. And um, uh, the other, uh, I guess I have two more things. The other question I have is, you know, my my children go to elementary school and they wait for the bus um, on the on the corner of uh, of uh, Marvin Road and, and Route Two. The new cut that you're proposing, or that's going to happen, I guess, um, where you're kind of making more of a more of a right-hand turn, I guess, the where they currently wait for the bus, um, and once that goes in, there there's no place to stand um, for my children um, to wait for the bus um, because there's a kind of precipitous drop off from Route Two down into the uh, you know down into that property. What what can we do to make sure it's safe for my kids? And you know, as I've already testified, and and this is new for you, Mr. Toll. Um, you know, your employees on two separate occasions have gone around the bus with its flashers on, and I've gone into the business to deal with it. But like, uh, you know, it really, it real. That's that, honestly with this whole entire project, that is my biggest fear and concern. Um, so what what can we do to make sure it's safe for the kids? Is there, Jeff, is there a way to place a bus shelter there? A small? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple thoughts. So one, um, we certainly, if you're coming up Marvin Road and team to Route 2, the right side of that, there's not a lot of room on the right side now as it is, but 
Uh, the intent is to create a shoulder there, and then there is a, a, a vertical drop off down to that existing swale um, on the right. However, as we realign that road, the opposite side or the left side of that intersection, we are not proposing, there's actually a relatively big uh, flat, flat area. Um, let me share that just so we can, I can kind of show everybody what we're talking about. Um, so, and correct me, uh, oops, sorry, uh, if I'm wrong here, Mike. Um, but so, a little hard to see that the shaded area is a new road alignment. This wider uh, area here is the kind of fork right now that comes in. So, as we, uh, you know, round this out, this area still will be a little tight, but this is, we're not proposing to, uh, we're reclaiming it and, and taking the pavement out, but we're not regrading this area specifically. So this potentially could be a, a much flatter, safer area for um, you know children to wait for um, you know the bus in the event that uh, you know we don't have the capacity on the right side. Um, that's just a quick thought. The the other option obviously is is we can grade we can extend the grading out here a little bit in the right away. I don't see AOT necessarily having a problem with that in creating a, a flatter landing area on this side if we felt it was necessary. Yeah, the thing that concerns me is um, uh, currently they wait for, uh, and you can see on on your drawing right there, you know where the um, where the existing stop sign is. That's where they currently wait. Um, the the problem with with waiting on the other side, and I can tell you as somebody who watches um, one of the businesses that's further down on Marvin Road, um, you know their employees coming to work, you know basically at the time my kids are waiting for the bus, they come in pretty hot, turning right from Route 2 on the Marvin Road. So basically, you know, what you're proposing or what you just mentioned would be putting my kids in, you know, basically a turning lane because everybody uses that as a turning lane anyway because there's quite a bit of shoulder on, on you know, that, that part of the road. That, that honestly, that scares me more. <laughs> yeah, so, and that's uh, fine. Like I said, we, we can, this grading here, it's a, I think it's proposed at like a three and one. We can extend this out and, and create a flat area here that would be, you know, a, if we feel that's a safer environment. I mean, the problem with this right now is it's a fork. It's a wide radius um, kind of forked angle intersection. So vehicles coming, turning on a Marvin Rav, uh, Road from the west do, you know, have a tendency to come in here hot. Um, right. That's part of what this realignment is attempting to do is make vehicles slow down more to turn into here so they can't just kind of do a half turn in down the road. Um, but, but certainly, you know, uh, that's a pretty simple fix as far as just creating a, a small plateau over here that, that we feel that is a safe location for the children. Yeah, and obviously the farther, you know, off route to the better because uh, snow plows in the winter, you know, we've, kind of, we've had to dodge state snow plows and and all sorts of things. So obviously the farther down Marvin Road, you know, even by what your proposed stop sign would be, would be yep. obviously ideal. Just, you know, I mean, getting them off route too, as you said, nobody goes 40 miles an hour there, even though it's, you know, even though that's the proposed sign. Right, yeah. Um, and the, la the last question I have is, is um, and, and, and thanks for being patient, is the, um, the proposed, um, the proposed lots A and B, um, you know, for inventory, as you as you testified before, you're going to have people who are going to uh, inevitably be parking on Marvin and Goodenow Road because they don't want to go get assaulted by the um, you know the, the the car salesman. They want to just look at the cars, and they're inevitably going to be parking on Marvin and Goodenow Road. Is there anything we can do to maybe not have that happen? Well, you know, I mean, certainly one thing we're obviously doing is we're putting a gate up here on this parking lot to deter people from going in and out of there. Um, you know, as far as telling people not to park on the side of the road and walk in, you know, I don't know how that's enforceable on the town level. Um, it may be a, a better question for Tom or, or the chair uh, as far as what restrictions we could certainly put signage up potentially you know no parking on road or this side of road or something um but I, i'm not sure what else we could really do beyond that i'd have to defer to our chief of police on this one jeff yeah certainly we could restrict we could restrict the, the site board because again this is a site board issue not a brb issue could restrict parking on along the road uh in other words basically put up signs um, 
where I live, we have signs at the bottom of my road that says no parking on either side of the road. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> yeah, right. I have a very famous swimming hole right across the road from my, my, my drive. And I have a lot of neighbors, a lot of people from Norwich University parking down there. Uh, I can call the police, but what the heck. Okay. Uh, but it is, it is prohibited. Yeah. All right. Well, well, thank you. I know there was some discussion in the past that, that, that there, uh, and Mr. Till, I think you own the Kia dealer, dealership down the road that, that key, uh, inventory from the Kia, uh, facility was being unloaded up in this area. And, um, I think we heard testimony to the fact that that, that wasn't going to occur, but I'd like to hear your response to, to that as well. I sold the Kia dealership. So I do not own the Kia dealership. Is that what Kia, anybody knows Kia, Kia unloading cars up there? I don't, um, as far as I'm concerned, they will not be unloading any cars up there. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other comments by or questions by board members? By interested parties? Chair, yeah, I know you had, Go ahead. I, I know you had a concern about the uh, signage and the floppy things, you know, that tend to spring up around car dealerships and and um, you expressed a, a, a a concern and a, you know, almost a prohibit, uh, prohibiting those things. I saw Mr. Toll is here again tonight. Uh, so I, maybe we could talk to that as well. Well, I, I, I take it that at the literal sense, there'd be no advertising on that lot. To me, advertising is guys flopping in the air, balloons, signs, banners, None of that is going to be printed on that lot. And we're fine with that. I mean, it's not, um, I mean, it's, 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 it's tucked away enough that there wouldn't be any purpose for us to do it anyway, but, but we're fine with that. Just, you know, respecting the fact that it's in a residential area. Right. No, no, that's no problem on our side. Uh, we'd be more specific, but right now the word, the language that Jeff chose was an advertising. Uh, I think that falls under the general category of advertising period. Right, I got it. But I was a lot more specific about balloons, floppies. <laughs> right. <laughs> Something that annoys the hell out of me, but it's it's a reality. Um, if there are no further comments or questions. I think where we stand here is the issue of the lighting. I think all other issues have been addressed, not necessarily resolved, but that'll be for the board to decide. Um, I guess you need to have this get back to us on the lighting. Uh, we need to have a straight discussion about what is appropriate, what is inappropriate. Um, I have my view, I've done my research. Uh, I think the bylaw is kind of clear. Um, and however it's not really specific on the language what constitutes the site so there may be some wiggle room there but um i don't believe the way it's been calculated is in fact what we intended in fact the table on top says it isn't because the table on top says it's seven foot candles period Bob, do, you, do you see this being continued to september 1st can't hear you tom <laughs> You see this being continued to September 1st? Is that a timely enough for you, Jeff? Uh, I would say so. I, again, I, unfortunately, I'm not in control of, of the revised lighting plan. Uh, I knew they were able to get us a revised one in a timely fashion last time around, and they're, we're working on a security level one now, um, which will obviously most likely need to be revised as well. Um, but my I, I believe the way I'd like to approach this, if Abel's fine with it, is I, I'm going to reach directly out to LSI um, and confirm that they can meet those uh, that deadline and explain the standards in detail, and then most likely have a representative of theirs attend 
uh, the September 1st meeting if, if we feel an additional meeting is necessary. So um, I, I would assume, just assume we can meet those deadlines and if something changes, I, I can let Tom know, but I, I think it's doable on our part. We are scheduled for a meeting that day, right, Je um, Tom? Right. Yeah. So um, should we continue this to September 1st? Yes. Yes. Mute, John, mute. I entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. This is Josh. Josh. Second. Second, second by Polly. <laughs> Discussion on that motion. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Raise your hand. Aye. 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 <laughs> okay. So we are we are uh, continued uh, to uh, the September the first. If for some reason that's a real problem for you, Jeff, get back to Tom immediately. Let us know. We are scheduled to be that new meeting that night. That night, regardless. Yeah, I should be able to get a confirmation on that tomorrow, and uh, I'll, I'll let Tom know one way or the other. And, and just so I'm clear, then that would most likely be the only discussion uh, topic on the September first meeting. Then. That's that's the only thing I have. I think everything else has been addressed, not necessarily resolved, but addressed. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Okay. Thank you very much, then. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Thank you. And um, <laughs> with that, um, this hearing is closed. Um, and we thank you all. Uh, the board has other business, and we're probably going to. Do you want to go deliver the session tonight, guys? Just for the record, I have to go let my ducks in, so I'm going to run out, but yes. What are we deliberating on? Uh, well, uh, the uh, matters have been discussed before us tonight, with the exception of lighting. Nice. We can discuss the lighting, but we're going to hear more on it. And, and uh, Mr. Chair, we've had that uh, issue with uh, the B trans. Right. Yes, we have another issue we definitely need to discuss. Uh, so we will we will go to a little discussion. <laughs>